Today we look at a watch that answers the question, if you allocate absolutely zero resources to design or promotion, how good of a watch can you build for $75? And the answer to that question is pretty dang good. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Alton. I live in Canada, and for as long as I can remember, I have liked watches. I have always liked watches. I rocked an F91W the year it came out. But it wasn't until about five years ago that I really rediscovered watches as an adult, and I happened to buy this little gem here. A simple quartz Timex Weekender that I bought for a mere $35 Canadian off Amazon.ca. In those early days, I watched a lot of YouTube videos looking for the best of the budget best. And back then, my close personal friend Jody from Just One More Watch often reviewed Chinese factory brands like Pagani Design that offered a lot for very little. These cheap and cheerful Chinese crackers always caught my eye because they demonstrated exactly what you could get if you simply took the creative property of a company like Rolex or maybe Omega and ran through the scanner and pressed copy print. But for some reason I find myself having never purchased many of these specimens, instead gravitating to affordable Timex or Seiko or micro brand offerings. And thus, I haven't featured them much on the channel. I wish I had because you may have noticed those homage channels, they do really, really well. People love these watches. And so when AliExpress had their big spring sale, I couldn't help but pick up my very first Pagani design for a ridiculously low price of well under $100 Canadian. Even today, you can pick one of these up for around $99 Canadian with discounts or about $75 US dollars. I spent more at Boston Pizza for my family the other day. I guess the first question you might be asking is, having waited so long to pick up my first Pagani design, does it live up to my expectations? Well, it is budget friendly, that's for sure. Utilizing a cheap but reliable VK64 movement produced by Seiko, the Pagani Design PD1718 Tudor clone is made with quality components. This includes 360 nail stainless steel for the well-proportioned case, sapphire crystal, and screw-down crown and pushers to give it 100 meters of water resistance. It has a very well-finished solid link bracelet with clever embellishments on the sides and a clean-looking milled clasp with three micro-adjusts. It's held together with screws, which make adjustments simple, and it even claims to employ C3 loom on the dial and a ceramic bezel. The printing is clean. The applied markers engender a feeling of quality. The chronograph is functional, and even the brushed and polished case looks pretty well done, so long as you don't compare it too closely to finer Swiss watches. All of this adds up to a lot of value for money. But specs and materials aren't everything. The question is, how does this watch make you feel? And I admit to feeling conflicted about this watch. On the one hand, it looks really good, and it should. Tudor spent a lot of money on this Panda design. That's the benefit of being a photocopy company. You choose popular and attractive designs by brands that most people can't afford faithfully, but not too faithfully, recreate it, do a half-decent job of material selection and production, price it well due to owning the factory in which it's made, or at least being cousins with the owner in which it's made, and you have a big hit on your hands. And for 75 bucks, it's hard to find something as good-looking, wearable, or frankly functional as the PD-1718. But it isn't perfect. And I never thought it would be. For one thing, the screw down pushers tend to get stuck, which is why in most of this video, they're left open as they're hard to unscrew. And make sure to put some Loctite on those bracelet screws once you have it sized or they will back out. Also, and this may be merely a personal preference, but the VK64 movement utilizes a 24 hour subdial on the right where I'd have preferred a ticking seconds hand. 
So here's a bit of a funny story. When I began shooting the watch, I actually spent a few minutes of film on it before I realized that unless I activated the chronograph, absolutely nothing was happening. I might as well have been shooting still images. When you do engage the chronograph, the minute counter sort of jumps a small fraction, enough to make me wonder how accurately I can rely on the subdial, which is printed with such small markings that realistically, I think I could only be confident in the five minute markings anyway. It also stops after an hour, which means that you won't be timing your 75 minute lasagna in the oven with this bad boy. And the watch did come from the factory with a few imperfections. It was delivered with a scratch on the ceramic bezel at the six. And the hands clearly look like they were tossed loosely into a bin after production as they're all marked up. But unless you're shooting macros for Instagram, you will likely never notice. And finally, there's an issue that has nothing to do with Pagani design as it is solely Tudor's fault. And that is the large snowflake hand. I know this design is iconic to the brand and remains controversial among enthusiasts, but its flaw becomes apparent when you want to read the chronograph hand and almost one quarter of it is covered. I guess we just aren't meant to time anything between the hours of 8 to 10. At the end of the day, the real reason I think I feel conflicted about this watch is because I really value the warmth that you feel from the creativity and the ingenuity and the blood, sweat and tears that goes into a unique watch. Whereas this homage, well, it just kind of leaves me cold. I love unique watches like Seiko's Monster Line or creative interpretation of vintage watches like Belova's A15. And I really enjoy talking to micro brand owners like LV at Van Banner or Peter at Second Hour or Ivan at Vario. They put so much heart and soul into their design and production that when I wear their watches, I'm left with a feeling of warmth and delight. These watches reflect a piece of their soul, which I simply do not get with the PD1718. Does that mean you should not buy this watch. Absolutely not. It's a great watch for 75 bucks and I bet it will last for years without issue. And when it does finally give up the ghost, it won't owe you anything. And I also think that there's a place here for those who want to try on Tudor without shelling out the thousands of dollars to do so. Isn't that why they sell so well in the first place? And I bet it would make a great gift for someone in your life who doesn't care about name brand, but just wants a good looking and accurate watch. At the end of the day, I always recommend that you buy what makes you happy. And if this makes you happy, then go for it. As for me, I still feel conflicted. So I think I will pass it along to a friend or a relative who isn't as snobby as I am. Well, thanks for watching everybody. If you enjoyed this content, please feel free to like and subscribe. Tell your friends about us, hand out some pamphlets, whatever it takes to get the word out about half past 